Hi, and welcome back to my videos for General Chemistry 2. Today I want to tell you about how we use radioactivity to discover the ages of all kinds of artifacts from archaeology, paleontology, geology, and even astronomy. To do it, we'll combine what we learned about nuclear reactions in video 37 with what we learned much earlier in the course about rate laws. For example, take this nuclear reaction, in which technetium-98 undergoes beta decay to form an electron and a ruthenium-98 nucleus. Way back in video 11, we found out that radioactive processes like this one are first-order reactions. If you've forgotten about what first-order reactions are and how they work, you might want to have another look at videos 11 and 12 to refresh your memory. Anyway, back in video 11, we found out that a first-order reaction has a rate law that looks like this. The rate of the reaction is equal to k, the rate constant, times the concentration of the reactant raised to the first power. For the reaction we're looking at here, the reactant is technetium-98, so that's what belongs in the brackets. So, what can we do with this? Well, remember that there are two equations that can help us learn more about first-order reactions. The first is this one, which shows us how the initial concentration of the reactant is related to the concentration that's still left after a time called t. The second equation tells us how the rate constant is related to the half-life. Here's how we use these equations to help us find the age of an item using radioactivity. Suppose we find a rock weighing one kilogram. This rock is made of the mineral sylvite, which contains potassium. A small fraction of natural potassium is the isotope potassium-40, which is radioactive. It undergoes beta decay to form an electron and an atom of calcium-40. Suppose the rock we found contains 1.00 milligrams of potassium-40. However, we know that when the rock was formed, potassium-40 would have been 2.808 times 10 to the minus 4 percent of the mass of the rock. Based on that information, how old is the rock? It turns out that we can figure this out using the information we have. To do it, we'll use this equation for first-order reactions. To find the initial concentration, we'll use the fact that 2.808 times 10 to the minus 4 percent of the rock was originally potassium-40. 2.808 times 10 to the minus 4 percent of 1,000 grams is 0 0.002808 grams. So that's our initial mass of potassium-40. Our final mass is 1.00 milligrams. We need the initial and final amounts to be in the same units, so I'll convert this final mass into grams, which gives us 0 0.00100 grams for the final mass. We'll put these into our equation for first-order reactions. But wait, the equation we're using asked for the initial and final concentrations, not masses. However, it turns out that the concentration is proportional to the mass, so we can use mass in this equation instead of concentration and still get the same results. So now, the only thing we need to solve this equation is k, the rate constant. To get that, we'll use the other equation we learned for first order reactions. We'll look up the half-life in a table. If we do that, we find out that this reaction has a half-life of 1.30 times 10 to the ninth years. We'll plug that into our formula, and we find out that the rate constant is 5.33 times 10 to the minus 10 years to the minus 1. Now we can plug that into our original equation, and we're ready to solve for t. The fraction in the logarithm is equal to 2.808. When we take the logarithm, we get 1.0325. Remember, in this equation, we're using ln, the natural log, not the base 10 log that we used when we were calculating pHs back in video 20. Now when we solve for t, we find out that t is 1.94 times 10 to the ninth years. So that's the age of our rock, 1.94 billion years old. 
This really is the way that we determine the ages of rocks that contain minerals with potassium in them, and it gives us very accurate results. Let's try a different example. Suppose we find a 100 gram bone that contains 3.10 milligrams of the isotope carbon-14. It turns out that a living animal's bones contain 0.0100% of this isotope, so that was the initial mass in the bone. How old is the fossil? It turns out that carbon-14 is another radioactive element. It undergoes beta decay to produce an electron and an atom of nitrogen-14. Since this is a radioactive isotope, we can once again use our first-order reaction equations to find the age of the bone. The initial mass would be 0.0100% of 100 grams, which is 0.0100 grams. The question then tells us that the final mass is 3.10 milligrams. I'll convert that to grams so that the numerator and the denominator are the same unit. So that's 0 0.00310 grams. Next, we need to know the rate constant, which we can get using this equation. If we look up the half-life in a table, we find out that it's 5,715 years. That gives us a rate constant of 1.75 times 10 to the minus 4 years to the minus 1. So we'll plug that into our first order equation for k, and we're ready to solve for the time. The fraction in the logarithm is equal to 3.2258. When we take the logarithm, we get 1.1712. So now we solve for t, and that gives us 6,690 years, so that's the age of the bone. Using carbon-14 to find the age of a bone or other artifact is a very common tool in archaeology, and it's called radiocarbon dating. Well, that's enough new material for now. In the next video, we'll wrap up our discussion of nuclear reactions by talking in more depth about the fusion reactions that happen in stars, and we'll find out where all the elements in the periodic table come from in the first place. It's a great topic to end the course with, so I hope you'll join me for that. Until then, have a good week!